Hey you guys, uh, my name is Jonathan Dale and I am a singer, a songwriter, I am a graphic designer and a videographer and photographer. I am uh, a son, a husband, a father and a friend and I'm also a heroin addict and this is my story. Um, I grew up in a Christian home, all, you know, all of my, my childhood, all of my life. My uh, dad was a pastor, so my brother and I were preacher's kids. And um, so I, I had a wonderful um, upbringing and a great Christian upbringing and uh, two awesome parents and a, and a great brother. And, um, and I, but there was something different about me, and, um, and I, I recognized that at a very early age. Um, by the time I was eight years old, I was traveling all over the country um, singing gospel music. Um, every weekend of my life from the time I was eight till I was 16, I was in a different state, in a different church, or a different concert venue um, singing my songs, and um, which did pretty well for someone uh, considering my age. Um, by the time I was 13, I had songs that had charted. Um, I had you know, several records. and. Um, Things were great. Things appeared to be perfect for me. But I think by the age of 12 years old, um, that was the first time that I recognized that something was wrong. And um, I remember thinking to myself then, these thoughts that I'm having are not normal. These things that I'm thinking, they're not normal. And that was the beginning of my struggle with uh, mental health issues. And um, I have to say that it only progressively got worse from there. So music was my everything. I loved music more than anything and um, I loved entertaining people. I loved encouraging people. I loved singing songs that made people smile and feel good and, and that, was, that, was, uh, that, was, that was all I had ever known from the time I was 8 years old and, and so by the time I was 12 years old I was battling mental health issues and that was the only thing that was holding me together was my career and that's what was so sad for me and I, because I was terrified at the fact of being honest with someone about my mental health issues because I was afraid that they would take my career away from me. And so, uh, you know, like I said, everything seemed to be perfect on the outside and um, music was my, was my all. And, and so by the time I'm 17 years old, I go to Nashville with a friend and we audition for a reality TV singing competition on CMT Country Music Television uh, called Can You Duet. A lot of people are familiar with Can You Duet for um, Joey and Rory, which were America's sweethearts for years and we all followed their story and their, their tragic loss. And um, But uh, we auditioned for the television show together and long story short, they ended up cutting my friend and keeping me and um, same thing ended up happening with my uh, duo partner that I would later be placed with in the season by the producers and the celebrity judges. And um, so I was partnered with Brandon Green of Loose Dell, Mississippi and together we were known as JB Rocket. And JB Rocket went all the way to the finale on CMT's Can You Do It season two. And um, we had a blast. Um, some of the most memorable moments were us doing songs like Neon Moon by Brooks and Dunn and More Than a Memory by Garth Brooks. There were just some of the most incredible moments of my life. And um, so uh, we uh, made it all the way to the finale, um, came in as first runner up on the um, season two of CMT's Can You Do It? And I signed a huge record deal with the Valerie Music Group of Big Machine Records, which was home to like Taylor Swift and Rascal Flatts and all these huge celebrities. And um, so we signed our record deal and we were well on our way to stardom and uh, well on our way to success and everything that we had ever dreamed of was promised to us. So. Um, um, I'm still dealing with mental health issues at this point in my life. I'm still having um, just really dark stages in my life. And um, so uh, later I would find out that I was diagnosed with um, um, bipolar disorder. And um, so I didn't know that then, but I was spiraling out of control constantly. And um, I was up, then I was down, I was up, and I was down. And I felt so alone because at that point in my life, I didn't know who was really my friend and who was my friend because I had been on TV. And so I was scared and lonely and sad and um I remember being the first time ever being exposed to alcohol at a um, after a party after the CMAs and um, at that point someone else let me a drink and I was underage and I remember the first time that I ever felt intoxicated I felt relief I remember the first time that I ever felt um, impaired I felt um, like reality had stopped I felt like all the things that I felt in my mind and all the things that I battled every day, all the demons that I faced were quiet for once. And um, that's really when my addiction issues began was that night. And um, later that would spiral into and introduce me to things like marijuana and cocaine, which um, 
The latter, I feel, ultimately led me into my opiate dependency issues and my heroin addiction. And um, so for several years, I was opiate dependent and addicted to heroin and a long list of other drugs. Um, when I say I was uh, addicted to drugs, I was a junkie. Um, anything and everything that I could pull up in a syringe or a needle and inject in my vein, I was, I was willing to give it a shot. And um, it was a... Uh, like I said earlier, the reasons now that I've come through to realize through therapy and through counseling and, and all these different resources that were made available to me, um, it uh, you know it was I was like I said earlier trying to shut off reality. Um, I constantly lived in a state, and I've said this before, in between reality and, and fantasy, and what I wanted reality to be was my fantasy, and so I would cover all that up with drugs, and so. Um, Long story short, I, I ended up a full-blown heroin addict. And, uh, but this year, actually, next week, I will celebrate on December the 7th, 2017, I will celebrate being clean from heroin and a long list of other drugs for five years. And it's, uh, it's been incredible. But you guys, um, and that's incredible to, uh, to be able to say I'm, I'm very, very proud of myself. And I'm, I'm, and I'm able to say that. I, I have, I have the authority to be able to say that I'm proud of myself and um, I, uh, it's been a hard journey it's not been something that was easy I had to dig very deep to overcome the obstacles that were put in front of me when I faced recovery um, recovery is not something that is just wished away it is something that you face daily it is something that I still face to the every day of my life um, it is something that I think about constantly it's something that I have to remind myself and keep myself in check for I have to continue to dig deep you know I, I know that Paul in the Bible we know that he he struggled we know that there was there was a thorn in his flesh and we know that there was issues in his life and things that that bothered him just like I've mentioned here and um, he just kept going he just kept digging he just kept fighting and he just kept overcoming those obstacles one by one and that's what recovery is recovery is a step-by-step -step thing recovery is not a overnight fast food instant release kind of type thing it's that's not how it works and um, it's a, it's a process it requires a lot of patience it requires a lot of love from the people around you it requires acceptance from the people around you and but most of all it requires love and um, and that's that's why I'm here is because of places like water life um, and my family and my wife and now my newborn daughter and um, and still music music is so important to me and um, I'm just thankful for where I am because of my church because of my family and most importantly because of God Almighty and um, I'm alive today and I survive every day because of love and so I ask you um, if you know someone that's facing addiction if you know someone that's battling those things that is the answer that is the key is acceptance and love I'm not asking you to enable anyone I'm just telling you to love them and so now like I said earlier I am a husband I am uh, to my wife Courtney I am a father to my daughter my newborn daughter Presley Jane um, I'm a son I'm a friend I'm all these awesome things and um, I get to live all those things every day because of places like Water Life Church and um, it's such an honor and it's such a privilege to be a worship leader um, here at Water Life. I, I can't I can't even I can't even think of words to accurately describe how how excited I get on a Sunday and how nervous I get on a Sunday and how pumped I get on a Sunday when I'm on the worship team. It is literally the time of my life and I think everyone can see that I have a little too much fun sometimes <laughs> but um, I, I, I kind of I get a little happy and dance around but um it's uh serving at water life is is probably my favorite thing that i've ever done and i've done so many cool things in my life god has opened up so many incredible doors for me he has he's blessed me beyond my wildest dreams but serving at water life and being on the worship team and just on a sunday watching that countdown you know go from from five minutes to zero and knowing when that zero hits that it's time to go is the most amazing feeling and i'm so thankful for that opportunity i'm so blessed to be able to call this place my home i'm so blessed to be able to call all these people my family and i'm so honored that i get to lead god's people into worship every sunday that i am blessed to be able to be part of water life worship and water life church and um it's just an amazing opportunity Opportunity, amazing honor and I uh, my family and I are so thrilled to be here we cannot wait to raise our daughter in this environment this church culture this type of this type of movement this type of, of, of powerful movement we're excited for her to grow up experience that and to know God 
on a deeper and personal level than, 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 than we ever could have imagined possible for her and, and that's because that's possible because of Water Life Church. And um, so we're so thankful for that. My name is Jonathan Dale and this is my story and this is my song.